This is the Zimmerboard, a hackable x86 single board computer. It features dual gigabit LAN ports, two USB 3.0 ports, as well as a pair of SATA ports on the other end of the computer. The keen-eyed among you may have noticed this also features a PCI Express 2.0 by 4 slot that's exposed on the side of the device, allowing you to connect a variety of expansion cards, even a GPU. Its main intended purpose is as a personal NAS, 4K streaming server or a VPN gateway. But when Ice Whale Tech, the makers of this computer, reached out and asked me if I'd like to take a look at it, the conversation went a little something like this. Hi CNC Dan, would you like to check out the Zimmer board? Sure, but my channel is geared more towards gaming tech, so I'm not going to set it up as a server, I'm just going to play games on it. LOL, go for it. So, with absolutely no guidelines of what to do in the video, let's throw Batacera on this thing and see if it makes a good retro emulation box. In case you haven't heard of Batacera before, it's a pre-packaged Linux distro that's designed to turn any x86 computer into a retro emulation box. This is basically the closest thing you'll get to RetroPie for a regular x86 PC. Installing it is super simple, so I'll give you a quick step-by-step -step now. First, navigate to Batacera's website and download the desktop PC variant. Next, if you don't already have it, you'll need to download and open up Balina Etcher. Select the Batacera image file you just downloaded, followed by the USB drive you want to install it on. The image expands to about 9 gig, so pretty much any USB drive you can get these days will be fine. Just note that everything on the drive will be erased, so make sure there is nothing important on it before you hit the go button. Once the flash is complete, you can take the USB stick out of your computer and connect it to the Zimmer board. You'll also need a keyboard connected up before you fire up the Zimmer board, as the first thing you'll need to do is press the delete key several times after first connecting the power to enter into the BIOS screen. From here, use the arrow keys to navigate across to the boot tab and set the first boot device to your USB stick. This will make your machine boot from the USB instead of the internal eMMC storage. Press F10 and select yes to save the changes and exit the BIOS and Batacera should proceed to load from your USB stick. Now is a good time to connect your game controller of choice. So I'm connecting up my Xbox One controller with the USB receiver dongle. The Xbox controller worked straight out of the box for me, but depending on your controller choice, you may need to go into the controller configuration and set it up. At the moment, no changes have been made to the internal storage on your computer, as Batacera is just running from the USB stick. But if you'd like to install it to the internal storage, open up the menu and select Install Batacera on a new disk from the System Settings menu. Select the correct target device, which should be the 32GB eMMC, and ensure the target architecture is set to x86-64, and click the Install button. This will wipe everything on the flash storage, including the pre-installed CASA OS. If you prefer to keep the option of booting CASA OS, you can just run Batacera straight off the USB stick, and skip the install step. Once the installation is finished, Remove the USB stick and restart your system and Batacera should start right up. I'm going to connect this SSD to the SATA port of the Zimmer board, which I have preloaded with some games that I think this system should run well. I've got this drive formatted as an NTFS drive, so my main Windows computer can recognise it. This way I can easily plug it in and add games directly to the drive. With all of that out of the way, let's fire up some games and see how this thing handles. I'm not going to do a full in-depth performance test of these games here, I just want to give you an idea of what platforms should be playable. I'll start out easy with some Sonic on the Sega Genesis, which is also known as the Mega Drive here in Australia. I've actually got one of these here that belongs to my wife that hasn't been fired up in over 25 years, so I'll have to get it out one day and give it a test. Unsurprisingly, this game runs flawlessly and I'm able to upscale it as far as I want without any issues. Games like this should run on just about anything though, so let's move on to something a bit newer. This is Spyro the Dragon from PS1. This series, along with Crash, pretty much defines my childhood, so these games will always be something I love to come back and play time and time again. I was hoping to use Duck Station for this one, but I've been unable to get it to launch this game, so for now we're using PCSX Rearmed with integer scaling at 5 times resolution. It's not quite the magic that Duck Station can manage, but it still looks pretty good. Let's move on to something a bit more difficult. This is Goldeneye on the N64. I didn't know anyone with an N64 growing up, so this is one of those games I missed out on. I'm testing it as I believe this is one of the more difficult N64 games to emulate. 
Frame rate wise, it appears to be running smoothly, but man, this control layout is dreadful. I can barely even move the character in the right direction, let alone actually shoot anything. I'm sure I could go in and remap the controls to be a bit more like what I'm used to, but I'll probably never actually play this game. So let's just move on to the next one. This is God of War Chains of Olympus from PSP. This one plays quite happily at 3x resolution, so I'm confident most PSP games will run flawlessly on this system. This is another one I missed out on when it was released. I did own a PSP, but I hardly had any games for it. I was much more interested in modding it with custom firmware and running emulators on it than I was in actually playing games on it. Dreamcast is usually playable on machines of this sort of power level, so let's give that a go next. This is Sega Rally 2. I haven't got any of these games set up to display frames per second, but to me this one feels like it's running at about 90% of its usual pace. This is one of the more difficult Dreamcast titles to run, so you may get away with a few of the lighter titles at full speed. Okay, the last console I want to try is GameCube. This is Mario Kart Double Dash. This is one of the easier titles to run on GameCube, and it is definitely not running at full speed here. It's relatively smooth, but it's obvious we just aren't producing frames quickly enough here for full speed emulation. Overall, it makes a pretty nice little emulation box for older retro titles, and everything you need to get up and running is included in the box except for a controller. It may not be quite as fast as a larger desktop machine, but it is comparable to a Raspberry Pi, and there's no need to buy accessories such as a case, heatsink, and fan to keep the thing running happily. The housing on the Zimmer board is its heatsink, and it's more than enough to ensure cool, silent operation even with heavy loads for an extended period. I reckon with a small fanless GPU such as a GT1030, you'd be able to run GameCube and Dreamcast happily, maybe even some PSP and Wii titles while still having a completely silent setup. If you're interested in seeing me test it out with a GPU, let me know in the comments and make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I've got a big update coming for the Zendeck project in the next week or two, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.